Greetings hobbyists, this is Artisans of Vool, and in this video we're going to have a look at how we can make gears in Blender. So this was a cool request, I thought it would be really worth covering because there's a few different angles to this. So we'll start with the included features in Blender that allow us to make gears really quickly, talk about what that can do and then some of the limitations of it, and then what we can do to remedy those limitations. Now this will go fairly in depth at points and I'm going to be honest it's going to depend on how pedantic you are with wanting your gears to be in inverted commas perfect. So we're going to start with the simple one. If you just shift an A and go to mesh you can actually get an option to create gears. Now if you don't have that go to edit preferences type in extra and you want this add mesh extra objects with that checked if you shift an A you get the gears option and we can bring in this gear. Now, straight away it has a minor issue, which is that it doesn't have this internal face, which I'd want, but let's talk about some of the other settings. We can talk about how to fix that in a second. It's very easy. So first thing we've got is the number of teeth. So we can change the number of teeth this gear has, either making less or more to become potentially really extreme. Right, I'm gonna put that to eight just for now. Then we've got some options here and this gets not complex but it's worth knowing what they can do and where everything is measured from. So let's start with the radius. I've got this set to 2 at the moment which means that in theory from the center out to this part I'm just going to I'm just going to exaggerate this quite a lot. So from the center to this corner is going to be 2 of whatever units you've got. The width is very simply the width of the actual thing. I'm going to put that to 0.5. And then this is where we need to understand what these different things do. So let's start. The base is how wide it is in the center, except for, annoyingly, this isn't actually measured from the center outwards. It is measured from this edge here inwards. This means the other bit's really important, which is this dendum, which is how far the tooth comes out. And then the addendum is how far it comes out from this point. Now, what we need to do is understand where this all comes from. So I'm going to put the addendum down to zero. I'm going to rotate this round on the Z axis to so about there. So we've got this on this red line to make it more obvious so we can see where everything is. And at the moment, our radius is set to two. So from the center to the outside edge of our addendum is two. So for example, Sarah wanted the central bit to be one. What I need to do is make sure that my dendum and my base equal to 1. So let's say I put this as 0.4. So that's now, if we look in x-ray, 1, 2, 3, 4. And then I can change the base to 0.6. And that's then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So that equals a total of 1, meaning our central section is 1. This is really important to understand. Otherwise, this can feel like a load of nonsense that's not really affecting your gear. Then your addendum is basically whatever comes off of this. So this is in addition to your radius. So for example, if I put that as 0.1, that means that now we can see we've got one more of these units extra. I haven't rotated this perfectly, but you get what I mean. So that's all of those measurements. And it's really worth knowing how that works. So you can get an exact measurement on your gear. I wish they'd made this a bit simpler personally. Then we've got our pressure angle. That is this angle here. So from this edge inwards, so this corner. So we can affect that by making it more or less extreme. If we go to zero, it's gonna be perfectly flat. And then anything outwards, I don't know why you do that, or inwards, I'm gonna put that back to zero for the sake of it. Now actually in this instance, this would probably make sense if we're having it at zero to just have the addendum as zero as well. Then we have the skewness. This is going to create an odd angle here, so basically the angle between the bottom and the top. So if I just do that, you can get your skewness, so you can make these really cool funky gears like that. I'm gonna put that back to zero. And then our conical angle is if you come in sideways, going to create either an internal or an external angle there. Again, creating some really nice gears. And then finally, the crown allows you to change these little bits. This is actually changing the addendum more heavily and the addendum partially. So let me just put that out, otherwise it's going to look weird. So you can do really cool stuff like that. So it affects everything. But if you don't have an addendum to it, if I put that back to zero, it's going to create errors with your mesh. So you don't want to have anything like that. 
So you need to have your addendum, otherwise this is gonna cause problems if you're intending to use it. Right, let's put this all back to zero. So this is generally pretty easy to use once you understand this concept of radius, base, addendum, and addendum. Once we've got that confirmed, do remember that you can always press F9 to come back to that menu if you haven't changed anything else. We can have a look at this and have a look at the problems and how we're gonna solve them. So first problem, we've got this internal section here that isn't solid. And if we want to print this, we want a solid object. So I'm just gonna Alt and click and then Shift Alt and click. We can Control and E and bridge edge loops and that's sorted. I don't know why that doesn't have a tick box to just make that happen. Then we're gonna to come to our biggest problem in my mind. And that is the fact that whatever we did with these teeth, the teeth are always just made up of two segments. So one segment there and then another segment there. This means whatever happens, you're gonna have this horrible angle and it's not gonna be particularly rounded. Now there are ways of solving this, and again, it depends on how much time you want to take and how pedantic you want to be with how perfectly round this is. Now at the moment, this is actually two units in radius, so I'm just gonna bring in a cylinder that's two units in radius, and then let's up that to, I don't know, 128, and then G and then Z that down, so we can see this Oh, and I've actually made that too wide, so let's just bring that into there. Anyway, so you can see we've got this angle here, and because it's flat on this, it doesn't really work very well to create an actually perfectly circular shape. Now we can sort of solve this. We could go into edge mode, A, control and E, and then we could subdivide these. Let's go with somewhere there. And then to try and make this round, we can use loop tools. This is also an add-on that's included in Blender if you don't have it. Let's just type in loop. I don't know why I've got caps lock on. Let's deal with that. Activate that. And what that's going to allow us to do is if I go to these vertices, and let's click all those. In fact, actually, let's just go into edge mode. And I want to get rid of those internal ones. I don't really care about these. So let's dissolve those with Alt and X. Once we've got that, if I just select all of these vertices from there to there, we can go to edit and then we can go to relax. Let's put up our iteration. So this is how many times it does it with one click. And I'm going to click relax. And you'll see that, that has slightly rounded this off. I can do the same thing here, relax again. And we've got what looks like a much more rounded outer shape. And we could do the same thing here, which is suffering from the same problem and here. Now the issue with this is that you're gonna to have to go around and do this to every single one of these segments or teeth. It's gonna get a bit tedious. And more importantly as an issue, if we come out of isolation mode, is that this hasn't actually made this perfectly round. It looks more round, it's definitely smoother, but it isn't a perfect circle if that's what you want for your gears. So there are some real limitations here, and I haven't really found a good way of actually solving this to make this perfectly round. If you know a solution to this coming from the gears, please do let me know, because I'd love to have a way of simplifying this, especially seeing as you have to do it tooth by tooth. So if you do want a gear that's nice and quick, this is probably the way to go. If you want something that's perfect, this is probably not the best choice. What I'd suggest you do instead is just create your own gear. So I'm gonna shift A, mesh, bring in a cylinder. I'm gonna change this to, I don't know, 64. That should probably be round enough. And importantly, it's divisible by eight, which I'll come to why that's important in a second. And then let's just S and Z that to make that a bit thinner. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn this into a gear. I'm basically gonna create these teeth. So first thing we can do, let's just S that down, in fact, what I'm going to do is go to item and then we can change our dimensions here. Let's go to three. So that's a radius of 1.5. Then I can come into face mode, select here, select here, and then we'll just I to inset a bit, let's say 0 0.5, control and E, and then we can bridge edge loops. So we've got our internal part. Then we want to make our teeth. Now Blender does not make this easy, unfortunately. If I click this, what I'd love to be able to do is go to select and then check a deselect. And let's say I wanted four selected and then four deselected. Now, because this is 64 faces, that will give me eight teeth, just like this one. So what I can do is put deselected up to four and then select it up to four. But you'll notice this doesn't work. It looks great here, but actually it never creates this perfectly as soon as you've got an even number on both. So here we've got more than four. Even if I change the offset, I can only ever change it to an odd number. Not really helpful. 
So this isn't going to work to create our teeth. Instead, we're going to use another trick that Blender can do. It's a little bit more tedious, but not by a lot. What I'm going to do is I'm going to click that face, and then I'm going to count to make sure that I've got the teeth. So I've got one here, then two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That would be my teeth and my gap, and then one more. Then I'm going to press Control, Shift, and then plus on my number pad. And you'll notice what that's done is it keeps selecting the next one along in the same pattern, so at the same distance. Then I can click there and there, and you'll notice if I come over and press Control, Shift, and plus, it carries on doing the same. And then I can one more, and then one more, Control, Shift, and plus all the way around, there and there, Control, Shift, and plus all the way around. There probably is a quick way of doing this. I just haven't found it yet. So again, in the comments section, feel free to tell me I'm doing this stupidly, but this is the best way I've found of doing it. Then we can just press Alt and E, extrude faces along normals. I can put my distance, let's say 0 0.5, and we've got our gear, but importantly, this is more rounded. So we've solved that issue with our gear not being rounded enough. So that for me is my two ways of creating gears. I either use the gear option that is available to us here, or I use this. The final way you can do it, if you choose to, is mesh and then cylinder. I don't know why I've got this stupid radius. Let's put that down to two. And let's make this really smooth to 256, something like that. So let's just grab that one and then G and then bring that across. So then I can just shift and A mesh and bring in a cube. Let's scale that down to, I don't know, 1, maybe something less than that, 0.7, S and Y, or X, whichever we choose. G and then X, and then I'm going to bring that there. That's S and then Z to make it really thick. So this is going to be the hole. And then I'm going to shift click here and then use hard ops, which is a paid for add on, but it does a lot of cool stuff like this. Go to mesh tools, go to radial array, and I'm going to hold shift to do this around the active object. And then we've got all of those just been added in. Click, click, control and minus, and we've taken off of these bits. The only issue with this is it's really extreme. I don't think it looks as good, but it is a useful technique for certain things you might want. But I'd probably go this route or this route, but I did want to include this idea of a radial array just so you've got it. And if you really want to, you could shift A, mesh, bring in a cylinder, and it's S to scale that in. S and Z to scale it up, and I'm going to come to this, Q, so again for hard ops, ever scroll to bring that back, and then I'm going to click, click, control and minus, and then H to hide that, and then H to hide that, and we can reinstate that sort of circular point. And if we want to, Q, ever scroll, click, we can go to vertex, select these vert, oh, let's actually G and then X those in, and then I can select these and then S to make those smaller. It's Shift and Z so it's not doing it on the Z axis. So something like that. So you can also do other things like using Booleans to create your gears. So hopefully that gives you loads of gear options to suit your needs and whatever technique you prefer. I'm not saying there's a right or a wrong way, it just depends on your needs. If you found that useful, please do hit that like button. It really helps the channel out. Subscribe if you're not subscribed for more great Blender content, and if you want to support the channel any more, there is a Patreon page where you get these videos a week ahead of time, ad-free, and great other perks as well. Have a great day, guys.